We welcome you, everybody on the line, everybody in person. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. May the Lord touch you and give you even more than what he gave us during our time of worship. The Lord always want me to tell you how special you are to him. He does not, not look at your failure. He does not look at your weaknesses. When he look at us who follow him or love him, he sees the sun in us. When God comes to your house, he is looking for the sun in you. So make sure you have the son of man living inside of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are a blessed people. Walk that way. Walk the talk. Overcome. There are things we must overcome every day. And God gives us time. And God gives us the power to overcome. So may we not waste the time and may we receive the strength of the Lord to overcome. Amen. 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 We want to preach, but before we preach, I am crying because of the condition of our world today. As I stand before you yesterday, I received a call that they are killing all many Hutus. It's a, a tribe, you know, in, in my country. Mm. And when they kill them, the <coughs> evil government make sure that Nobody knows, nobody says anything. They say, they announce, if you, you will watch us do this. But if you say, mm. you, we will kill you too. So they are beginning of the males. Mm. There are many things going all over the world. You know what's going on in Iran? Mm. Different levels of wickedness. But I cannot even stop crying over our state here in Colorado. Mm. This is a past week, our uh, wonderful uh, father, my father-in-law, he contacted my family. He said, I sent you a box with a gift. And the empty box came back to me. They stored the gift. That's the kind of the situation here in Colorado. We have a problem. Now, uh, right now, they're bringing more illegal people. And this is not racist. I'm from Africa. It's not racist. I came too. But United States is a country when if you come in the legal way, you will get the documents. You will. So, uh, in the news, they have declared Denver, some of counties, emergency, state of emergency, because we have a great number of illegals. Did you guys know? It's all over in the news. John knows. It's in the news. And it's been in the news this whole week. I've seen it before. And so, there is wickedness all over the world, all over the world. And so this is not the time to go on a vacation spiritually and say, you know what, I deserve a vacation. This is not the time to quit. You think it's easy? Even when Jesus was on the cross, if he quits, if he had quitted, we would not be here today. But he endured. Hallelujah. There is a word for those who will endure. Hallelujah. When you endure, help comes. Hallelujah. 
So today we are going to continue the message which I preached the last week. This message is on YouTube and this message also I shared in a form of an article. If you want to receive our article, life-changing articles that many people who have made it to heaven by just being mentored and listening and obeying what we share, which the Lord gives me. Uh, so I share that it's on a line you can see, but the Lord say, let's do part two. And the Lord show me there are people who are already changing by listening to that message. There are people who are having the fear of the Lord by listening to the message I preached last week. Deeds of righteousness. God wants us, believers, to have a act of loving kindness. The salvation of someone is not complete if all they did was to go and say the little prayer. In Jesus' name, I receive you, Jesus. And then... They go home, but when you go home, your wife cannot tell whether you change or not. You say the prayer, but they are saying the same old men or old women. We must change. That's why you are here. We are here because we are pressing in to become like him. So faith is incomplete. Faith is imperfect if there is no work to accompany your salvation. God wants our sons and our daughters to start working hard to build their treasures in heaven. Do you want to have a shame for salvation? When you get there, they tell you, okay, you better made it. But guess what? You're going to be at the third level of heaven because, son, you got saved, but you did not put effort into serving God. And serving God doesn't mean always to preach. It could mean that you are coming early. For example, you come to the service, you come there early. 30 minutes early, 15 minutes, and you're going to pray. It could mean that you decide, you know, every Sunday, I'm going to stand at the door and welcome the people and open the door for people. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to serve. Mm -hmm. You need to know that there are angels who are given to each one of you. And every time you come to prayer, you receive a reward. Every time you give, you receive a reward. Every time you call a brother or a sister who is hurting, you get a reward. So God told me to tell you, work hard, serve God, so that when you get to heaven, you will just be amazed. There was a time that I showed me my grandpa in heaven. And I thank you, God, that my grandpa on the side of my mother is in heaven. I thank God for showing me that. He showed me, and he showed me that everywhere he was, he was at the first, uh, the third level. That's not where you want to be after you hear this message. Why? Because the country back then, the whole country was Catholic. And many people are going to the service, but they're not saved. But my grandpa, even though he was Catholic, he was one of those who read the Bible and he tried to do the little he could. He could not have a good preacher to preach it to him and this is how you make it to heaven. But he made it and he did a little bit of work. And so when the Lord showed him to me, he said, this is your grandpa. He does not have too much. He does not have much. But I'm glad to let you know that he made it. But over there, he's no longer grandpa. My grandma also, his wife, made it to heaven. When I was in the United States, uh, when I arrived, 
she was not saved she was back home and I hear a testimony of a woman who died and the Lord raised her after four days my grandma heard after she I sent her a CD she heard the whole message after she heard the message she raised her hand she said I want to be baptized I want to receive Jesus so they had to go miles and miles to find a pastor to come and lead her into salvation and she got baptized after that she went home amen so she made it also in heaven and i am sorry you can't call her grandma you can't call her grandma anymore because everybody looks young where she was there was not much reward but she made it but for those of you who hear this message let's not just go to heaven let's go to heaven and have rewards on the earth you like to have a good house a good car you want to have good clothes how much more should we work to have those great things in heaven so uh there are many people who do not think that work is very important, but it is. Because your work is the evidence of your salvation. People ask, what are the good deeds, Pastor? What are the good deeds? Well, in the book of Luke, chapter 10, there is a story of a good Samaritan. I'm not going to read the whole story, but I want to tell you what it is. Luke 10, 25 to 37. We know the story. There is a man who is beaten and a Levite passed by and he looked the other way. He looked the other way, probably he said, oh, these days the streets are so bad. And he kept going. Not give water, not pray. By the way, the Levite that the tribe where the priests are issued from. Why is that? Because... There is a selfishness that is born with our sinful nature. So as we draw near to God, we need to start getting rid of selfishness. The Lord, when he was on the earth, he fed the poor before he fed himself. He did so many good works that we do not even read in the Bible. The Bible tells us there are many things that he did that if they were written, the whole world would not be able to write the books of what he did. In our story, a priest also, we can say a pastor, a bishop, a man of God, a woman of God passes by and when they pass by, guess what? They keep going their way also. Let us not be a people who live like that. The moment you see the needs, it's the moment of your ministry. Don't wait until they ordain you. Do not wait until... They release you to do the works of loving kindness. Always do them. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 10, a man asked Jesus, a lawyer, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, he said to him, what written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. In other words, love the Lord with everything within you. But there is a second part to it. This is a commandment that is twofold. Number one, love the Lord. But the second one, and your neighbor as yourself. So we have a problem here because we have maybe a situation like the Good Samaritan where we love the Lord only. We always pass by those people in need. We say, oh no, I've got to go to church. I've got to go to prayer. And every single day, Jesus is in our street, but we are passing him by. So the Lord wants to remind us, make sure that this commandment is a twofold. You love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. But don't stop there. You've got also to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that means you've got to love yourself too. There is nothing wrong to love yourself, but make sure that you love also the neighbor as much as you love yourself. So there is nothing wrong if you take yourself to the mall and you buy yourself nice clothes. There is nothing wrong. Just make sure that you remember the naked, you remember the poor. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me this morning. He said, tell my people, do not have a half love. Well, you love your kids. But when you see other kids, you cannot do the same kindness to them. You cannot do the same favor towards them. So be a people who have a complete love. Go help people. And when you do, do extra mile. Go extra mile. It's written in Matthew 5 uh, 41. So the good deeds are the deeds you do to help fellow many kind. Hallelujah. Be careful, hallelujah, about evil deeds. We will talk about evil deeds in a little while. Be careful also, there are times uh, we have works, but they belong to somebody else. If, for example, uh, there is a, a Jesus birthday party at your church and the person says, please, I need you to come early. Anybody who can please come. You say, oh, I will go. But instead of going, oh, your kids are grown up. I will send my kids. That's okay. They can go. But when they go, the work is going to be written on the records, not on my records. So we need to be careful that we don't spend all our time sending our kids, our spouse to do it while we do our own things. Each one of us, because this is God's house, he wants us to serve in his house. Mm. So I am not telling us that we will go to heaven because of those works. Number one, we will go to heaven because Jesus died Amen. and he made the way and we accept his sacrifice. But the Lord told us last week, make sure you accept him as your savior, but also as your Lord, your king. Meaning that whatever he say, we surrender, we let him Lead and we submit to him. Somebody will quote me 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 
I was there the entire week reading a couple of verses because I could see that somebody is saying, well, even with our works, I will make it to heaven. Yeah, you could. But why would you have a shameful salvation? And uh, the Lord pointed to me, telling my people to not twist the scripture. So we're going to read that scripture that many people can easily twist. In 1 Corinthians 3, 13, 15, 16, 14 or so. Each man's work will become evident for the day will show it. When you serve God, don't give him work just to appease him, get rid of him, but do it with all your heart. When God created the things, the Bible says he looked and he saw that everything was beautiful, excellent. So there is a day that will come and your work will be revealed with a fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. But if any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved. Yes, so as it through the fire. There are people who say, well, with our work, I will make it to heaven. You could, but don't bet on it. God wants us to work. The truth is that when you read the Bible and you obey, work will be automatic. So it's very important that we read the word every day, every day. In verse 15, if any man is a work is burned up, the work that will burn up is the evil works. The work that you do with the wrong motive to manipulate, the work that we do to be seen, the work to we do under the fear of men instead of having the fear of God. Uh, so the Lord spoke to me, he said, do not read the just verse 15, what it says, but he himself will be saved, yet so as a true fire. Why would you bet on your salvation and be saved just better saved through the fire? So the Lord told me to tell you to go to Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes back, when the time of judgment comes, you remember the story where it talk about how he will put some people on the right and some people will be on the left. The right hand of God is a place of power, a place of grace. A place of mercy. It's a place of rewards. But the left hand of God means judgment. So the Bible tells us that he will divide the people like a shepherd who shepherd the sheep from the goats. For the sake of time, I will just only read verse 41 to 46. Uh, then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Isn't it sad that Jesus came and that everybody makes it to heaven? but not everybody makes it. Isn't it sad? Doesn't it bring you tears? When you think that there is a hell, which God in the beginning made it only to the devil, to the demons, to the satans, but 
in the end, human beings also are falling into it. I believe this should have us all have like holy anger and go in the street and tell everybody the good news. He says, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. Why are they going to hear? They did not help the poor. They did not feed the hungry. So it's a time that we begin to have good works. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. He put them on the left, the hand of judgment. The Lord told me one time that my right hand hold the peace, but my left hand, it's one of the hand, I'm sorry, it fights war. So there is a hand of God that fights. There is a hand of God that brings judgment. Uh, God is not just a God of love forever, forever. Everybody welcome into heaven. If God welcome, Everybody in heaven it will be chaos because the good and the evil ones will be together. So I was uh, I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. You did not invite me in. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in a prison and you did not visit me. These deeds are very important to the Lord. Hallelujah. We still go, go uh, talk to people. It all starts by talking to the people. You can't know their needs until you talk to them. But we have a problem today. Everybody, you go out to the mall, everybody is on their cell phone. You get on the bus, on the train, everybody is on their cell phone. So we've got to put them away. Cell phones are really a destruction. You know, I was thinking maybe I should go back to the basic one. The one that you, you can't even text. <laughs> Can somebody give me that gift for Christmas? <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Then uh, I was sick and in a prison and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in a prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. In other words, we cannot love God at home. We do not say and we pretend, oh, I love my friends here. We need to have a genuine love. And if it's a genuine, it's going to be to God, but it's going to be also to the neighbors. Mm. Amen? If we do not have that towards our neighbors, it's not real love. Because God is in everybody. Mm. Hallelujah. Even the sinners, when you look at them, you are going to see something good about each person. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. So, uh, then he will answer them truly, I said to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of these, the least of these, you did not do it to me. This will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal fire. You see them going to hell because they did not have good deeds. So that's why deeds are very important. And remember, in this ministry, in this church, we are not teaching you probably how to be wealthy, how to be successful in your business. I do believe when we teach you how to get to heaven, everything will follow. So this is part of preparing yourself to meet with God. I don't want anyone who is listening 
standing before your, your God, but you did not love, you did not hear. And each one of us, including me who is preaching to you, there is room to improve. So God gives us time. God gives us a means. So let's go ahead and work hard so that when we get to the bridge, when we get to that Jordan, when we get to the sea where we must cross over, our deeds will follow us. In Revelation 20, verse 12. It says, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Which book? Every day there is a book being written about us. There is an angel who recalled every thought. There is an angel who recalled every word. There is an angel who recalled everything we say and everything we do. So the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. So there is the book of life, but there is a book also of your deeds. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to to their deeds. I'm about to close. There are many times we say, God knows my heart. And I, I said that too. God knows my heart. He knows. But also make sure that God knows your deeds. It cannot be always, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. I didn't go. Oh, God knows my heart. He knows. But he is also looking for our deeds. Hallelujah. Amen. So the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. There won't be anybody missing. Anybody who is cremated, anybody who is a uh, dog, uh, uh, who, 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 who uh, was drawn into this, everybody will be dead. Sometimes I think about that, it's amazing how everybody will be dead. Even at the aborted babies, everybody will be dead. And they were judged, every one of them, according to what? According to their deeds. Your deeds are the evidence that Jesus presents to the Father to fight for you. The Lord told us about judgment. He said, he came to die for everybody. The witch, the good, and the bad. He died for them. <coughs> and he told me that at the judgment, he tried to speak up for everybody. But most, he lost. You remember the scripture said that he is our mediator. It's like he's our lawyer. He goes to the father and says, Father, please, I die for that one. I die for that one. And that one who was not good. And that one who is good. But remember, the throne of God is a throne of what? Build and justice. So the Lord said, I speak up almost for everybody, but most. I lose because their deeds is the evidence, the evidence that I must present to the Father and the Father applies justice. Do not think that when we are out of this life that God will be unjust to you. No, he's a God of justice. He will show you loving kindness. Uh, he gives you grace. He understand God is not going to judge you 
Because you didn't go to prayer, because you were not feeling good, you were sick. No, he's not that kind of a God. He is a good God. He understands you more than anybody can understand you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he is a good God. Don't ever believe the devil who says he is a bad or he is a very severe. He, he won't understand. No, he understands. But let us remember that he gave grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but he gave grace to the humble. Mm. We are done. We're going to close. Mm. Amen? Amen? Now we know what to do. I want when we get to heaven that everybody and my team, we will all rejoice together and say, you see, pastor, thank you for teaching that. You know, sometimes when I preach, I can feel people looking at me like, ah, don't talk about that. <laughs> when I spank you, there are some who don't like it. But then later on, you're going to thank me for it because you observe you did, and wow, your mansion is shining. Amen. Hallelujah. I grew up in a family where they spanked me. Chantal can tell you. There are stories who can tell you about spanking. I skipped most of them. Chantal skipped most of them when they spanked us. She was very good to get a sack. Those sack there in Africa, they are fluffy, and she puts inside her skirt. So when they beat, they they are beating the sack. <laughs> <laughs> and she had other tricks when when they beat, she goes around, and so the spanking spoon end up hitting the air. <laughs> and the mother who is angry is not looking very well. She thinks she spanked you. <laughs> I took the beating. I took them. Hallelujah. Thank but today, I am thankful that my parents spanked me. I am thankful to my elder brothers, my elder sister, who also uh, did not raise me saying the grace, grace. Grace is good, but there's got to be that fear of God. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand up. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare yourself to meet your God. We are not too far from the end times. We are already in the end times. Finish well. That's what the Lord says. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Finish well. You will finish well when you hear the words of God and you hear the word of God. The Bible says, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Nowhere does the Bible tell us to hear voices. We need to be careful about voices. God speaks by one voice. The devil is a voices, many voices, many ideas. Within a second, so many things coming and giving you fake and false revelation. Don't listen. Listen to the good shepherd when every day, morning and evening, my sheep, they hear my voice. Everyone who hears the voice of the sheep, they shall make it. This is the time on God's clock where we are in the last second. May the Lord help each
each one of us to end with, with good deeds. May the Lord help us to end with love, with peace, and with joy, and all the fruit of the Spirit. Father, I pray, help us to get rid of the works of the flesh. There are some people who operate in the work of the flesh. Number one, it's because some of you, you need deliverance. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray that you break the chains of division, of arguments, of lust. Hallelujah, my friend, as I pray, be repenting. Because when you repent, the chains will break. Father, I pray that you break the chains of rebellion. Yes. That you break the chains of a false teaching. That you break the chains of unbelief. I pray that you break every curse. Words are spoken against us. Yes. I pray, Lord, that you break sickness and disease. That you break every chain that bind your people. Hallelujah. As I pray, the Lord, I see demons and everything. But he said, continue with repentance. And then it is a prayer will be applied to you. Everybody, everywhere, all over the world, God, please deliver your people. Church, help me. Hallelujah. As we say, we bind all the demons, all the works of the devil. We bind you and we cast you out in Jesus' name. And you never come back. Addiction is broken off of you. Rejection is broken off of you. And all those works of the flesh in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord. Let's give him a glory. More freedom, more love, more peace, more love, more joy. More, more, more of you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. My friend, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, remember to smile and to be happy.